How do you marry social issues and entrepreneurship in one company? It's a decision that you make when you start a business. I think that's the easiest place to begin it. That you set up your business with a board that understands that that's what you want to do, perhaps with a, a legal structure which says there's a nonprofit linked or there's a nonprofit in the core that you know owns a for-profit or the other way around. Making money as a social enterprise is a little more difficult. That is something that One World Health was not set up to do in the near term. The conditions on the funding were actually specifically that One World Health not bring back any returns. That it work very hard to place the, man place the manufacturing of these medicines with companies who would produce them at cost and sell them around the world. And that that, is, that was sort of the sustainable plan and there always wasn't revenue for One World Health to keep it going. But the sustainability of it was placing a medicine, you know, giving ownership to another co company who would embrace it and take it on as their own. So there are different paths to sustainability. is isn't, isn't always bringing back revenue to the source company, right? To the mother company, let's say, that gives birth. It can be passing on a, a product to a company who becomes its, its owner, its, uh, let's say, the new parent that then has guardianship and takes it forward and is responsible for sharing it with the world. How do you apply innovation to social entrepreneurship? Innovation is at the center of social enterprise. It really has to be there. We have the need for social enterprise because we as societies and cultures in the world are not addressing needs that are there in front of us. Yeah? And they're not being addressed because traditional approaches, not so innovative, are not, are not able to address them. Sometimes it's, there are, there are innovations and there are ways to do it, there's not enough money. But in other cases, all the ways that we knew or that we believed or that we've evolved don't work anymore. So innovation is at the core of social enterprise and social innovation. And if you are a social entrepreneur who doesn't innovate, I would question that your time and your ability to impact is going to be limited. So, you know, it can be a little bit of a uh, challenge for some funders of social entrepreneurs. Who I've been told specifically, Victoria, you're evolving your strategic plan all the time. I mean, do you ever freeze it? Do you? And I say, no, we're always learning. I believe the most innovative and effective organizations figure out the best path and they work with their funders to say, come on, change is good, it'll be fun. What is your advice to someone wanting to start a social enterprise? One question that comes up is, when is the right time? How will I know? You know I've had this dream and I'm just, I'm, I'm just not happy anymore. You know, if you wait till you have all the money you need and all the people you need and all the contacts and all the this and that, then you'll be too old. Because you also need a lot of energy, okay? And as I just said earlier, there's something about having naivete, you know? And this, yeah, and this belief that anything can happen, that you can make anything happen, that youthful vibrance. So don't wait too long. And when that drive inside you is something that you just can't suppress anymore, it wakes you up at night or you can't even fall asleep at night or you can't pay attention in meetings at your corporate job or at your university because this isn't what you want to be doing. You want to be engaged in your social enterprise, you want to launch it, then that's the time to do it. If you're going to actually change your whole life, okay, get rid of, let's say, the wealth that you could have had if you'd stayed for your, you know, stock options to vest and all of that, yeah? So be disruptive. You're giving, you're giving a lot up, do, go for it. Do something big, yeah? Second, be persistent. That it takes a while to do these things. The more disruptive you are, the more um, not obvious, right? The more challenging to the status quo, the longer it's going to take. So it may take years and then doors swing wide open because things just happen. Just as you're about to stop, say, that's it. I've, you know, wait, wait, wait a little more and it'll happen. And then be patient with other people that, you know, we see things before others do. And we need to understand that it's our job to envision for them. It's our job to explain it. It's our job to picture it for them and be patient. And then not everybody's going to get it. And don't hang out with them a long time. You know, I want to hang out with you, not, you know, others who don't really give a darn about, about this. So who you spend your time with. You have a limited amount of energy, limited amount of time. Choose your, right? Choose who you want to be with well. One more issue is very important regarding starting a social enterprise and that is are you a startup person and perhaps there are some people in the world who know that about themselves before they jump in um, 
other people have to try it once and figure it out that yeah. you know it isn't for them. Um, but startup, you know, means you you jump in, okay, to a, a new place where the foundations are right. uh, not always clear. Sometimes there is no foundation and you're swimming, you know, and sometimes your head's underwater and you know then it pops up again, and you really have to go with it and you have to form a, a team where we have cliches right where you wear multiple hats, yeah, where people do whatever it takes. Um, you know, give, you need blood, I'll give you more blood, I'll give you my blood. Um, it is a fabulously fun experience for those who, who are thrilled by it, for, the, for people who genuinely do like it. For those who don't, who want desperately to commit to social enterprise and want to start up some new things, sometimes that is a place that's just too scary. It's just not a match for character and personality and spirit. And coming in a little bit later, when that organization is a bit more stable and needs people to give it more stability, carry on, build the systems and structure that will sustain it and carry it forward and allow it to really have its bigger impact. So knowing, are you a startup person or are you more of a systems person? Can you tell us about your new venture, uh, Medicines 360 and its main objectives? Medicines 360 is what I call a second generation nonprofit pharmaceutical company. We have commercial sales coming up, commercial sales in the US and Europe, and we actually have sales around the world. And we'll have commercial sector or private sector as well as public sector. And it's a pretty, pretty fabulous business to consider. This is doing the real thing. This is, you know, I'd thought when I had started One World Health that it would sort of be obvious to people how you would do work for good in the pharmaceutical industry and companies understood that but they still went to the Gates Foundation or the right. US government or someone to say if you fund us we'll do it we have the people and we have you know da, 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 but you need to pay for the clinical trials and that just isn't gonna work we need to figure out a way to fund all of this in the companies that we do have so that's what this initiative is that goes beyond One World Health in terms of partnering with pharmaceutical companies, but actually developing a pharmaceutical company that can be a model where we actually have commercial markets like every pharmaceutical company does, but we also have at our core that nonprofit which addresses needs and public sector and developing world. So developing that model company that any pharmaceutical company can choose to can choose you're, to have and pursue. Innovating a business model. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I need help with innovating this business model. You know, I contemplated getting an MBA before beginning One World Health. And I, colleagues and I decided if I got an MBA, I might never start One World Health because I'd think, oh, surely I'd fail. So I'm very naive with regard to business. But what drives me is the potential of technologies and the potential of business and that tremendous need. So we need, we need to get here. And we can't. It's not too far away, right? And business models are human creations, just as technology is. So we innovate the heck out of technology. Well, let's do it with business models too.